you're going to meet your wife to buy some furniture in a store and you're looking forward to it and thinking of the enjoyment they all have in picking the right table and the right chairs and then having it delivered. Really, all in all, it's just a happy occasion that you're looking forward to. And so you get off work and you head out towards the store, but you take a wrong turning and take a little longer to get there than you planned. So you're rather late and she is standing there waiting. When you arrive, she asks you how something else went, another business transaction that you were to complete that day, and you tell her uh, a part of the transaction that really isn't very promising, and yet it isn't absolutely disappointing either, but she grasps the negative in the comment that you make, and before you know it, uh, the conversation is already beginning to go downhill. Then you walk into the store, uh, she makes a few comments about how you're going to pay for the table and the chairs, and you don't respond as you ought to in an upbeat, encouraging way. You respond rather dryly and flatly, thinking to yourself, well, if she isn't really confident about this, why should I be? And you come outside the store, she says to you, would you like to go for supper now? And you say, no, I don't care. Do you want to? And she says, well, I only want a cup of coffee. So you say, well, I don't want anything either. And she says, well, will we just go home? And you say, yeah, let's go home. And so that is the end of the wonderful little transaction that you planned that was going to be an enjoyable move forward in your domestic relationship. Has that ever happened to you? And I would imagine that if the details are not precisely the ones that you have experienced, yet something like that has happened to you at some time. And you go home wondering, where did I go wrong? Why did I do what I did? And of course, there are a hundred situations where you could have taken a different turn. There are at least a dozen different moments when you could have answered differently from the way you did. And you wonder to yourself, why, why did I do that? And of course, away at the bottom of the answer is the feeling in your own head that uh, it's up to her to take some of the weight and the responsibility of things and of keeping things going happily and keeping things going optimistically. It can't always depend on you. She ought to be able to lift the thing out of the doldrums at some point. And uh, at bottom, that's probably a lot of the trouble, isn't it? You see different moments when you could have done differently to what you did, but just at that moment you decided, well, I mean, why doesn't she do it? She may as well save this evening. Why should I always be the one to save it? And of course, at the very heart of that is an attitude probably of self-pity and self-concern, probably an attitude uh, that is caught up with a martyr complex and uh, self-sacrificial preoccupation with what you have done so often to try to preserve the happiness of your relationship. And at the bottom of all of that is the feeling that you have a right to have somebody else take the weight instead of you. And yet it's so often impossible to do anything about that feeling, isn't it? You feel, well, I tried, I didn't try hard enough, but I tried. And uh, usually, uh, later that evening, or later that week, or later that month, whenever the Cold War eases off, you eventually end up apologizing anyway, and making the thing up. Now, why is it that you can't do that at the time? And you're probably like the rest of us. You answer, I, I don't know. It just, seems, it just seems that the ball is rolling in that direction and I don't seem able to stop it. It uh, seems as if the conversation just drifts that way. And yet you recognize that there are certain moments when you could have turned it differently. And 
probably you would say, yes, yes, there were those moments, and I was at times conscious of them. Some of them I wasn't conscious of, but some of them I was. But I just felt, oh, well, let's just let it go. I just felt a whole rising of my own nature that we just follow this thing out to the logical conclusion and see what kind of a ditch it gets us into. And you probably say that you found your personality and your nature just going that way, and so you just let it go. Many of us find that that is the greatest problem in our lives. That in situation after situation, our nature, the very inner essence of our being, seems to want to go down into destruction and into failure and into unhappiness. Now, we would like to say, no, 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 I, I, I'm really a happy person. I want happiness, most of all. Yet, you would admit that there are moments when you seem to want unhappiness. Uh, Dostoevsky puts it like this. He says, the only reason a man will act against his own best advantage is to have his own way. The only reason... A man will act against his own best advantage is to have his own way. And I think uh, m many of us have known that. We have seen that this is going to be to our disadvantage. We have seen that it is going to end up in destruction and un unhappiness. And yet something in us makes us want to do what will almost be a self-destructive thing. Now, why is that? Well, it seems to be our very nature, doesn't it? And what we've been talking about over the past few weeks is that most of us have discovered that underneath that nature of ours that wants happiness and that wants to be pleasant to our wives and our colleagues, there seems to lie another nature that is the very opposite of that a nature that wants its own way even if it ends up destroying itself. And what we have said is that that nature comes from the race itself. It's the whole human race that has been breeding that nature into its children and its children's children for generations. And why it is so strong in you is that you have inherited it from centuries of forefathers. And if you say, well, why is it there? Well, it's there because there's something in us that wants to be the God of the whole universe and wants everybody else to bow down to us and do what we want. There's something in us that wants that. There's something in us that doesn't want to believe that there's any God but us. There's something in the human race that has rejected the whole idea that there's a creator and it wants to put itself in the position of that creator. Of course, it's unrealistic. We are not the creator. And in fact, there is a creator. There is a maker who has made us. But we have bred into ourselves down through the centuries the idea that we, in fact, are the God and the ruler of the world and that we have every right to our own way even if... And it's amazing to see this, but even if it seems to bring about our own destruction. And that's why it seems so impossible to change that nature. Because it is part of the human race itself. Now, is there any way out? Well, all the psychological games we play are like trying to tame a lion with a piece of candy. Uh, the only way is for that nature to be completely remade and recreated. And that is what has happened. That is what has happened in this man, Jesus. I don't know if you know much about him, but there is an amazing verse in the New Testament near the end of the Bible. It's in a book called Colossians, C-O-L-O-S-S-I-A-N-S, -S -S, if you don't know how to spell it, Colossians. And it's in chapter 2 of that book. And it is the verse 3. For you have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And the amazing fact is this, that you have actually died, 
and that nature of yours that causes you such trouble was actually destroyed in this man Christ. He was more than a man. He was the son of the maker of the world. And that nature of yours that is so intractable and so incorrigible and so untamable and so untrainable, that nature of yours was destroyed in a cosmic miracle that the maker of the world performed from way before the foundation of the world. And he actually destroyed you and remade you in his son. And it is possible for you through believing that and through trusting his spirit to make that real in you, it is possible for you to be freed from that personality of yours. Let's talk a little more 